Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines. XRP preparing the two-headed dragon, ladies and gentlemen. We got that and so much more. You're going to love it. Roll that beautiful intro. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show. You can follow us on Twitter, YouTube, and digperspectives.com for exclusive content. Right now, $2.66 trillion market cap for crypto. The market is up 1.7%. 67,700 plus for Bitcoin, 3,300 plus for Ethereum, 106.9 billion plus market cap for uh, USD Tether, XRP at the number seven spot at 58 cents. It's up 2.2 on a 24, off by 6.3 on a seven day. Looking at the range of price very quickly here, we're ranging between 58 and 59 cents. Now, this is a tight trading range that we normally see, right? So remember, we're in that crucial flippening zone and structural support zone that Agrag Crypto has told us about. So we'll have to keep an eye on that as we uh, move forward throughout the weekend. Now, just starting right here for a second, uh, I think XRP Crypto Wolf's got it right. Uh, There's been some confusion, actually, about the stablecoin announcement from Ripple on the ledger. And I think a lot of people are very confused, but I don't understand why. And I'm going to try to do my best from the channel to really get people to understand that, you know, having stablecoin on the XRP ledger is going to be phenomenal and it will not challenge XRP's role. XRP has always been a bridge asset that where you use it where applicable, you're not forced to use it. And ultimately over time through mass adoption, people are going to understand that that is the best way to bring people to your network. Because think of it, Imagine you being a customer of something and it solves a problem for you, but you're forced to use a particular token on the platform, no matter what. Even for the, let's say a few of those things that you do on that platform, you don't require really the need of their token, but they force you to use it. That would build resentment over time. And you would have that feeling like, you know, if I ever find something someday that doesn't force me to use this, I'm going to leave this network and I'm going to go to that one because that one doesn't make me force me to use something when I don't need it. And that's why ultimately this is the longer path to take but the right path to take in my mind. And I think XRP Crypto Wolf's got it right. Ripple's new stablecoin launch is probably the most bullish news for XRP so far this year. I completely agree. Now I wanna tell you something. Ticket sales are going cray cray. And I want you to get a ticket, but just take a look at this very quick trailer here. XRP Las Vegas, 26 days away, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready, XRP community. We are now under 30 days from XRP Las Vegas 2024. Celebrating a new era in finance with the XRP community at the largest XRP conference in the world. Our amazing speaker lineup with Perry Ann Boring, Christopher Giancarlo, David Schwartz, Simon McLaughlin, Kevin Maloney, Andy Schechtman, Nancy Beaton, John Deaton, Joe Endoso, Ferran Pratt, James Metalawman, Lynette Zhang, Will Petruski, Jeremy Hogan, Robin O'Connell, Jason Cousins, Greg Kidd, and newly added Congressman Wiley Nickel. Thanks to our sponsors for your support of XRP Las Vegas 2024. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, when you think about all of these amazing people that are taking time out of their life and their schedule to come be on stage for all of you, this is not for me. This is for you. And I tell you something, you are responding in kind. And I am super grateful for each one, each and every one of you. Uh, It is a record breaking numbers and I am so grateful that the community is responding in this way and I encourage all of you to get your room on site at MGM. There's still a discount and they're talking about us having to cut sales off right now because if we can't get the extra space needed to expand, 
we're not going to be able to sell any more tickets. So in order to make sure you're going to get a ticket and you will be able to come, please get your ticket right away because we may find out in the next week or so that we can't get that extra space and we're not allowed to continue to sell. How bad would that be? So make sure you get your ticket, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a remarkable conference. You're not going to want to miss it. Uh, so many incredible people, and we're very grateful that they recognize the value in being there. The future of finance is XRP, XLM, XDC, and others with real use case utility. Now, I said this based on a tweet from Wendy O, which was spot on. Bitcoin is slow. Ethereum is expensive. Solana transactions fail. This is the future. Finance is bright. You know, that's why I say the future of finance is none of those things. Uh, now, the, the future of finance and XRP, XLM, XDC, HBAR, and others, Quant, I think can help move those assets around better than they can themselves on their own network. Now, that I believe. And I'm not an XRP maxi, although I know people think that I am. The truth is, is I'm a utility maxi. And if your project has utility, I'm probably holding it. This is the president of Ripple, Monica Long, right here. Let me tell you something. This, this comment from Monica, 2024 and the predictions of 2024 have really, I tell you, Monica's always been kind of like very conservative in what she's chose to say and how far she'll walk out. But I tell you what, she seems to be very excited about 2024, which has me very excited about 2024. Uh, stable coins play a vital role as on off ramps to USD. In the wake of last year's banking crisis, they're necessary for traditional institutions, especially in the U.S., to access crypto markets. I'm incredibly, incredibly excited for Ripple to fill a key need in the market with our stablecoin. And again, I remind you, $150 billion market for stablecoins today expected to be $2.8 trillion stablecoin market in just four years, which is the size of the entire cryptocurrency market today, $2.8 trillion, give or take. That would mean for stablecoins to be at $2.8 trillion in four years, the crypto market would have to be between $40 and $60 trillion as a whole. Big things are coming. Big things are coming. And it just makes sense, as David Schwartz says, to have high quality assets on the XRP ledger. Ledger decks. One of the things that's been missing on the XRP ledger decks is like a large number of high quality assets. Like there's XRP and then there's a couple of like medium, you know, and then there's a long tail of interesting stable coins, but not like not access to the not like a, a, a high quality US dollar stable coin obviously is extremely important. So, and the Euro stable coins, so that's gonna help bring some of those things to the XRP ledger side. And we're super excited about it. And we're super excited about the fact that David Schwartz will be on stage at XRP Las Vegas, telling us all of the most relevant information and the best way to understand this idea that stablecoin is going to be launched by Ripple on the XRP ledger. I think it's fascinating. And I think there are very, very big things to come in the future here. Very big things. This is a reminder that Ripple is not out to challenge the system, but actually complement the system. You know, Brian Brooks said one time, you know, that uh, cryptocurrency, the nomenclature, the naming of these assets is really caused a lot of confusion. And he is absolutely spot on. I used to always explain it to friends and family and stuff as like, well, don't think of it as currency. Just think of it as like payment protocols or new payment networks. Right. And then there's a, a fee of using these things on the networks in most cases. So take a listen to this clip here. So the point that I always try and tell people is, you know, the, the biggest issue that I always try and focus on is cryptocurrencies are really not about currency. And, and the biggest misunderstanding of this whole discussion is the belief that 
if crypto is not doing a great job of replacing the U.S. dollar, uh, then crypto is failing in its mission. And what I, what I think we'll talk about a little bit today is the idea that most of crypto is about replacing the centralized banking system with networks that allow user control versus bank CEO control. The crypto assets that have prices are more like internet stocks. It's more like you bet on Google if you think there's going to be high internet traffic, and you short Google if you think people are going to go back to the post office, right? But it's not that Ethereum or Ripple or anything else is trying to replace the US dollar. It's trying to replace a system of transmitting value. And we'll talk a lot more about that. So for me, the prices are not that relevant any more than Google's volatility is. And in the early days of Google, that was super volatile. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And that's Brooks Entwistle from Ripple sitting right beside him. You know, that is so spot on. But then we get this. Now, this is Project Agora. Tokenization is the next frontier. This is a public and private sector collaboration. And uh, they are relying on cross-border technology experts to drive innovation into a single unified ledger. Listen to this. For joining us today, we are announcing Project Agora. This is an exciting new project which will experiment with how tokenization can improve the global monetary system. And it's starting with a use case that is near and dear to the BIS, which is cross-border payments. Project Agora builds on the vision for the future of the monetary system that we laid out in our annual economic report last year. We believe that tokenization is the next frontier in terms of the digitalization of money and payments. Agora is the most ambitious project launched by the BIS Innovation Hub so far. Its reach is global. We have seven leading central banks from around the globe that are participating. Listen. They are the Bank of France, which is representing the Euro system, and then the Bank of Japan, Bank of Korea, Bank of Mexico, Swiss National Bank, Bank of England, and the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. The project. Now that's very exciting because we know that there's a couple connections. Bank of France, for sure, we understand, right? And then we got the Bank of England, right? And then obviously we know uh, the Federal Reserve of New York and then the Fed Now system. All of this is super exciting to see how it's going to come together and tie in. Now I have one more uh, BIS clip I want you to see before we move to the next thing here. Listen to what this gentleman says from the BIS. It's Hyun Sung Shin from the BIS explains the old system works via SWIFT versus Project Agora. And those kind of applications, the canonical application there would be payment versus delivery, where um, you pay if and only if uh, the, the seller of the asset would then deliver the, the security uh, or, or uh, whatever the asset might be. So. Um, uh, these kind of transactions currently are done separately. So there's a messaging network, uh, and you're familiar with SWIFT, uh, probably. Uh, but the settlement is done separately through the bookkeeping operations along um, the, the chain of uh, financial intermediaries. Uh, but uh, if we have uh, the unified ledger that have both central bank money and commercial bank deposits all on the same platform, uh, we can have all of those transactions take place uh, instantaneously at the same time. Instantaneously at the same time. Now, the looking I've done, I cannot connect Ripple or XRP directly to this, but we know that there are projects with the BIS and the Hong Kong Monetary Authority on exactly tokenization, right, which is now seems to be expanding across seven central banks in major markets Right, so they can test cross-border and tokenization in that regard. This is getting so super exciting to me, I can't even tell you. But the two-headed dragon that I talked about really, I believe, is taking shape to become eventually at some point a new version of the Shane Ellis theory, essentially. So it is rumored, and it is a rumor, that BlackRock and Fidelity, along with nine other financial institutions, will be submitting spot XRP ETF applications on April 12th in just six days. And we shall see. I do believe at some point we get 
an XRP ETF, and I think there'll be hundreds, if not thousands, of other digital asset crypto ETFs. But my point is, is that when that day comes and you see how fast the accumulation of Bitcoin has been taking place since the onset and approval of the spot Bitcoin ETF. Of course, this is going to be the same thing when we get a spot XRP ETF. Mm -hmm. And when we do, there'll be great demand by these large institutions to get as much of that asset to back that fund because that's what they have to do. They have to have a qualified custodian and they have to back the fund for everything that's bought. But at the same time, we're watching Ripple prepare to launch a U.S. dollar stablecoin on the XRP ledger. This is going to help create an enormous amount of liquidity and utility on the network. Make no mistake about it. Just like USD Tether has made an incredible amount of liquidity and utility for the entire digital asset space, let alone what it done for Bitcoin in the early days. Think about what USDC as an ERC-20 token has done for the uh, championing and the growth of the Ethereum network and the Stellar network. Remarkable. The same thing's about to happen here. And as we get stablecoin legislation and as we get clarity that allows us to see the adoption within the financial system and banks to use it for settlement and payments, you're going to have a two-headed dragon. One is the market makers that are making markets every day for these payments. They know that they need to use XRP every day for their specific needs. Then you have the other head of the dragon, that is the collecting and buying the XRP to back the fund once we have the spot ETFs. That fight and demand to get that asset as adoption and utility grows, will create, I think, the kind of energy and FOMO that will draw off the loose liquidity off of the exchanges because of the real participants and market makers that need to use it every day, not just the retail speculators that are holding it. And what a moment that'll be when it gets here. Ed Greg Crypto reminds us, major target 57, bullish target 60, above 70, Valhalla, here I come. So there's your numbers right there. This is the RSI, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. So you're looking at the RSI. If we get above 70 in the RSI, watch out because it could really, really be something. And you know what? Here's where we are right now. So we got nothing but upside in front of us. So this is really, really exciting to watch. And we know the charts have been in a place that are just begging for a breakout. And we're waiting. One of the greatest attributes of any investor is patience. We're going into the Freedom Zone. Come on in. Not financial advice from me or anyone else. Digperspectives.com. All you got to do, digperspectives.com. Click the Freedom Zone and come on in. We're going in right now. You're going to want to know this. You want to know how uh, China really feels about the rest of the world and certainly one particular area like Britain? <laughs> uh, they're going to tell you right to your face. We're going into the Freedom Zone. Come on in. All right.